take a look around the Penn State Herbarium, and you'll realize times change. This one was collected in 2012. This one, which looks almost exactly identical, was co collected in 1870. Founded in 1859, it's the oldest natural history collection at the university. For those of you who don't know, a herbarium is basically a collection of dead plants. If you take a closer look, you'll see this is more than a collection. It's a portal connecting science and scientists. Starting with Evan Pugh. He donated 3,000 specimens to Penn State after becoming the university's first president. Following his sudden death in 1864, the herbarium was led by men with names like Buckout, Kelly, Wall, and Keener, a professional family tree that stretches all the way to Sarah Chamberlain. When I take this out of the press and it's dry, you know, I'm going to make an herbarium specimen of it. So you want About three or four years ago, I started writing a book on grasses in the Mid-Atlantic area, and so I contacted um, Al Travers, who was the curator at the time, and asked him if I could come look at some grass specimens. And um, that's kind of how this whole journey for me started. Okay. So you want to, like, hold it up. Chamberlain has been curator since 2015. When she's not in the field, she spends her day surrounded by history. When I took on this position, you know, I, I feel the, the weight of um, responsibility in making sure that they are preserved and cared for um, in a manner that will, um, you know, allow them to be here for, for generations. This is a wetland plant. Penthorum sedoides, kind of like that name. The cabinets contain more than 107,000 specimens, the oldest collected in 1830. The specimen itself usually reaches a point uh, where, you know, much of what you can see on it now we'll be able to see in 100 years if we keep the plants in good condition. If we keep They're dry, brittle, and on the verge of scientific resurrection. As technology changes, it's going to become easier and easier to look under, under the cover of the plant and really begin to understand the genetics of each of these plants. Claude de Pamphilus is the herbarium director. He says breakthroughs in genetics and DNA are beginning to unlock the collection's true potential. We can use DNA to, that may be extracted from those components to identify those organisms, see um, what kinds of organisms lived with the plant or fungi that were associated with them, what kinds of diseases they may have held at times in the past or in different parts of their geographical range. Understanding that, uh, that our connections in this world are quite complicated through a web of life and those connections are changing quickly uh, makes it very important for us to understand uh, the nature of the plants and animals we're interacting with. Think of it as natural history on a collision course with big data. We'll now put a little barcode on it with a whole lot of information that goes along with the specimen back to the uh, right on down to the uh, DNA sequences and the phylogenetic position of that plant in a phylogenetic tree. More than a century worth of samples are helping scientists understand evolution, species interaction, even climate change. They're using herbarium specimens to look at when flowering occurred in plants and then comparing it to uh, present day flowering and finding out they're flowering a lot earlier because the climate's getting warmer. But potential breakthroughs are bogging down. Scanning thousands of specimens and collecting genetic samples is time consuming and expensive. Right now, Chamberlain is prioritizing samples from Pennsylvania, applying for grants to scan and digitize more than 65,000 specimens. She also wants new samples from across the Commonwealth. I always fall back to how do you manage something if you don't really know what's there. And, uh... So it's important, and we might find, you know, people are rediscovering plants in Pennsylvania that they thought were extirpated. Similar efforts are underway at Herbaria across the country. It's a revival that would have seemed ridiculous just a decade ago, but like I said, times change.